Hey everyone, I've been comparing Keto Mojo and Ace Track, two modern ketone meters. Ace Track measures acetone in the breath, and Keto Mojo measures beta hydroxybutyrate in the blood. So I've been doing it for nearly a week and I'm sharing my results. The reason I decided to do the experiment is that when I started keto seven years ago, I didn't have a very clear way of understanding whether I was in ketosis, producing ketones, um, and the the sort of only affordable way at the time was to use pee strips where you pee on them and they go a different color um, depending on whether you're peeing out uh, acetoacetate, which in some ways is like the master ketone. Um, you know, you, you kind of get acetone and beta hydroxybutyrate from the production of uh, acetoacetate. So the issue with pea strips is that it really just changes color. So that's not a very clear scale. And also over time, as you adapt to being ketogenic, your body starts peeing out less of the acetoacetate. So if you want to know long term how ketogenic you are, you really need to find another way. And I wanted to compare the two of these because up until now, in my mind, the keto mojo was the only really reliable way of understanding what your ketone level was. And the reason I say that is that a lot of other breath acetone meters out there on the market, Ace Track, to my knowledge, is the first one that has a sensitive pressure gauge inside. If you think about blowing out ketones, the rate of breath passing over the sensor is clearly important in measuring how much is in your body. And Ace Track is the first one to accurately do that. So you can get repeatable, reliable measurements with Ace Track in a way that you can't with the other ones. So I really wanted to compare Keto Mojo, which measures beta hydroxybutyrate in the blood, and Ace Track, which measures acetone in the breath, and see what the experience was like. So I'm going to share my screen in a little bit, but I'll just go over how each of the machines works. And if you've never seen one before, you can understand what's involved in the process. So Keto Mojo is a little standalone machine and it comes with a, a kit. So what you find is if you buy the kit, that you have strips that are sealed in these little pouches. And when you take them out, they are like little circuit boards. And when you pop one in, to the keto mojo it detects what type of strip it is this one is for measuring glucose and you get ones that are me measuring uh, ketones as well so um what what you do is you pop a little lancet so a little needle um into a little pin i should say into this contraption pull it back and then prick your finger take a bit of blood and put it directly onto the circuit board and it doesn't take much you can prick yourself once to do the glucose measurement and the ketone measurement so really if you want to do it once twice three times a day however many times that's fine you just need to prick your finger every time now i'm not here to kink shame any masochists but it's not my thing to want to uh, draw blood frequently um, it's a little bit annoying it's a little bit painful and I'd rather not have to do it. So that is a bit of a downside with the Keto Mojo, but you know that you're getting a really accurate measurement of blood glucose, blood ketones, and that can be really important for mental health. Some people find that just measuring ketones isn't necessarily enough, that they actually need their blood glucose to be low enough as well in relation to their ketones to, um, to feel at their best. So that's an important point about Keto Mojo. And certainly in the early days of being in ketosis and trying to work out what keeps your glucose low and your ketones high, having access to a keto mojo, I can see being super useful. Um, the Ace Track, on the other hand, is in a way a simpler device. You just turn it on and you link it up to the app on your phone. And I'll put up a demo on the screen of how it works, but you just blow into it like this. And the app shows you how hard to blow to make sure that the measurement is repeatable and reliable. 
and um, you'll see from my measurements that you know if you want to take say three measurements a day then you can do that safe in the knowledge that they're calibrated by the, the breath pressure gauge and that's really good to know and it's reliable and unlike some of the other uh, breath ketone meters it gives you the actual reading in parts per million which is the natural unit of uh, measuring breath acetone it also estimates like the other breath acetone meters do how that parts per million of acetone reading might correlate with um, blood hydroxybutyrate and they're just two different things they they, they have different um, different functions really um, in a sense so you know the although they're both ketones they tell you different things and the way Anders Merman the the uh, founder of Diversify who make Ace Track the way he put it on my podcast recently which you can check out is um, that measuring breath breath acetone is a bit like measuring whether a battery is charging and to what extent it's charging so how much charge is going into the battery and the the how full the battery is is your, your beta hydroxybutyrate so what's your level of ketone reserves there because they do get turned back into acetoacetate to get used so you could see uh, your your measure of beta hydroxybutyrate is like an overage you know um how much extra do you have spare and some interesting results coming out about um, people with mental disorders or mental dysfunction feeling better the more ketones they have. And that's an interesting phenomenon that um, everyone's looking forward to an explanation for, really. So breath acetone meter can be super useful if you want quick feedback and you want to understand what you've done eating yesterday, how that affects how ketogenic you are. Um, the keto mojo measuring in the blood can be good for um, getting that extra resolution on on glucose as well um, another thing about the the ace track is that you have to be careful that when you do it so because it's measuring uh, you know a, a volatile gas um, is it volatile anyway because it's measuring a gas you can queer the pitch by uh, brushing your teeth first or having a mouthwash and anything menthol, uh, dairy, certain foods. So, you, you know, the best thing is to do it first thing in the morning before you have anything to eat or drink um, or brush your teeth. And then um, I would have it before lunch and sometimes after exercise because that gives an interesting result. You know, sometimes the ketones can be lower after, straight after exercise and then go much higher later. And then I would do it just before bed and that gives a really good resolution. And of course, big plus point, of the ace track in that regard is that you can measure and measure and measure and measure and it doesn't cost you anything extra whereas uh, with the keto mojo you know one of these maybe costs 50 pence you know less than a dollar now but um they, they're expensive um over the long term if you're using a lot of them and um you, you're not like a voodoo doll at the end of the process with the ace track but just like Anders Merman said, it's great to have both. And when you see the data, you'll see that they do tell you subtly different things, even though there, there is some crossover. So check it out and come back in a second. Okie dokie. So here is the graph, which shows how everything went. Uh, we've got the table of information there. So I um i started measuring ace track in parts per million uh breath acetone on friday and i did it three times a day uh friday saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday and i did it first thing this morning but that was it um you can see that figure in parts per million which is the amount of breath acetone that i have and underneath is the estimated um, blood level of uh, ketones based on the parts per million. Um, so those two, the ACE track measurement and the guesstimate of the blood from the ACE track measurement, the ACE tracks um, app makes, 
you can see them in blue and green on the graph there. So the blue line is the estimation based off the left hand axis um, in millimoles per liter. And the, the green is the actual measurement of uh, parts per million of acetone in my breath. Um, and that's taken three times a day. It's quite interesting. You can see, I put a line in because you can see the sort of up and down nature of that. We can talk about that a bit more. Um, and then in these lines, you can see the once daily reading that I took of the ketone module. Um, in for ketones in millimoles per liter. And that is the red squares that you can see there. So it's quite interesting to compare the guess that uh, Ace Track makes on what my blood ketones will would be based on the breath acetone, which is blue, versus the actual reading on the keto mojo of my blood ketones at the time in red. And you can see that for the first couple of days, it actually tracks really well. And then it's it's sort of the same over here too on Wednesday. But um, on Monday and Tuesday, it gets a bit further away. So that's quite interesting. And then the yellow is a measure of the blood glucose that I had first thing in the morning. It didn't change too much, but quite interesting that it kind of fluctuated. It went from 5.1 at the start of the week to 4.3. Uh, at the end of the week, first thing in the morning. So um, what can we see here? Well, you know, in a sense, what's important is that you measure what your readings are because you're really, in a sense, um, measuring against your, your own physiological levels. You know, if you watched my interview with Anders Merman, the inventor of Diversify, uh, who make Ace Track? He was saying that you really, um, depending on your age and stage, you know you're going to have quite different ketone readings to, in your breath to someone who's different age, um, different stage of you know the ketogenic diet journey, and it doesn't really matter what the relative number is to someone else. What's more important is what's your relative number to you. So you might find that, um, you know, all of these levels of mine, they're actually um, in ketosis, all the way from sort of light ketosis down at the sort of uh, 20 parts per million, all the way up into quite deep ketosis at kind of 100 parts per million level. And that tells me something, but um, only if I measure against my own data. Honest, if you're talking about mental health, then you really need to know what yours is because you can only you're the only one who can say how you feel so that's the important thing and you can see that it the general level of ketosis tends to go up throughout the week now i'm not sure exactly what's going on here but i took a note here very mild virus some people around me had a cold some people had covid and i just, I definitely felt a, a hint of something, but nothing too crazy. And I did wonder whether, um, whether that, you know, impacted my ketosis earlier on in the experiment. Um, I slept pretty well the whole time. Uh, I didn't really deviate from my usual diet, which is typically to stay, as you can see, stay fasted by these blue uh, squares, which mean I was fasted. I tend to stay fasted until, you know, one in the afternoon, something like that. And quite often you can see from these light blue ones that, that are post-exercise, uh, where I was exercising before lunch. And also you can see on the Wednesday when my results were uh, extremely ketogenic before bed the night before on the Tuesday and then stayed ketogen very ketogenic in the morning I ate earlier the night before so I thought that was quite interesting 
And similarly, on days when I didn't exercise, like Tuesday, I was very ketogenic if I exercised the day before. So it seems that exercise in the past predicts uh, ketosis in the future. And that's something that a lot of people find. And that um, uh, eating earlier in the evening predicts better ketosis or deeper ketosis the next day. And sometimes eating later can predict lower ketosis first thing or not exercising the day before can predict lower ketosis first thing. And that's what we see here, you know, in the Sunday, uh, I had lower breath acetone having not worked out on the Saturday. And then on the Thursday morning, this morning, uh, I'd eaten later last night, probably having my last bite around half past nine in the evening. And the first thing I woke up and my ketosis was substantially lower than the Wednesday, was 52, Tuesday was 67, Monday was 58, and so on. Um, but again, you can't tell exactly what's going on. You can just take guesses based on thinking about, you know, uh, what your behavior was, how your sleep was, when you ate, what you ate, um, and how you feel subjectively. You know, what's my mood like? Uh, do I feel irritable? Do I feel sharper? Have I got more mental clarity? All of these things. So that's the comparison. And um, I only did the, as I said earlier, I only did the keto mojo once a day because you have to use the consumables. So that's a, a little whistle stop tour. And this is just on Google Sheets, you know, uh, you could put this together quite easily yourself. Um, or you could ultimately put it into the Metsai app tracker which we're bringing out soon and get some really good insights onto uh, what measurements mean for your mood. So there you have it. That is the ACE track versus the Keto Mojo comparison. Um, I have actually run out of strips, which uh, is why I've only done a certain number of measurements a day of the Keto Mojo. And I think that says a lot, you know, um, Yes, keep buying them by all means, especially if you feel like you really need to keep your glucose down and understand how to do that to keep your uh, mental health as good as it possibly can be. But what I find is that to really engage myself and to understand the, the kind of um, gamification of measuring your own ketones, that Ace Track is the winner for me in the long term. Um, I dare say that I'll come back to Keto Mojo and I'll be using it. And certainly if you're just starting out on a ketogenic diet, I think Keto Mojo can be super, super useful and it can be useful to check in with it and to keep it and to use it. Um, even just to check how it compares to Ace Track over time out of interest. So I'm going to put all the information about how to get special discounts off Keto Mojo and off Ace Track. They're both brilliant products and I would recommend that if you want to measure ketones then you buy one of these or both um and i'll put all the the details in the in the uh the, the, the description of the video any uh, comment sections that i can or in a twitter thread if that's where you're watching it and um please ask any questions you know i'd love to keep the discussion going please subscribe so that you can see more of these types of videos i'm doing an experiment in august that i'm calling all gut where i'm looking at how to impact uh, gut health using diet and a few carefully chosen supplements. So please uh, subscribe. Thanks for watching and go out and buy your Ace Tracks and Keto Mojos.